I also realized that she was not perfect. Many things she would do in a way that I would not do, and I would think that maybe it was not the best kind of way. For example, once, uh, I'll just give now an example. I don't know why I'm now venturing into Mother Teresa's story, but uh, you led me towards it. Uh, when she had 85th birthday, uh, I gave her Croatian passport, uh, brought it to her because she said that uh, she wouldn't mind having it. And uh, we were at church, and then when it was over, when we celebrated her 85th birthday, many people came, there were droves of people, they would bring some postcards, some money, some flowers. I was sitting next to her, she would put it all on me, so it was growing on my hands. And after a while, I realized what she was doing. The people would come, and in India, it's normal to, when you show respect to somebody, to bow your head and she would put her hand on their head. And then I noticed what she was doing. Forgive me now for, it looks as if I'm now putting Mother Teresa down, and I'm not. She would put her hand aside, and she, then she would move the head of the person. So, like this. And then, like I said, and then, then I whispered to her, Mother, Mother it doesn't look nice. Why do you push their heads? It's really not nice, you are fast. And then she turned back to me, she was also a very practical woman, looked at me and said, but there are so many of them. So she was also very practical, she had her job to do, and she had to, to get, them, get them away. <coughs> so it's not perfection that we should look for. It's, I, what I noticed at her, it was this heroic dedication and will to do good. That's what I would like to see in the world today, this heroic dedication to do good to be creative and to do good. Some questions or comments? Thank you for giving us a profound favor and thank you very much. I just wanted to have a very busy life. A diplomat, have been our physician. Uh, when do you have time to write? Because you believe it as well. When do you write? See, this is called Little Sylvan Book. I have hundreds of them. I started buying them in London. It's number, which number it is, I don't know. This is one that fits my. So wherever I am and whenever I have something to do, something feel to do or write. It's in the plane from Brasilia to, to Tokyo. I had plenty of time. <laughs> then uh, when you are on Shinkansen, for me it's the most beautiful experience while driving with Shinkansen through the Japanese countryside. It's such a meditative experience. And this booklet always comes out at that time. So sometimes it's a fragment that somebody by, by chance says and you remember it and you put it down. It's a, you feel as if you are somebody who comes to the field, but harvest has been done, and then you take some grains, put them together, make something meaningful out of that. I don't think about that as writing. I'm not now going to sit and write. That's not uh, how I do it. It's an ongoing process, and especially when you write poetry, it is mostly small amount of time. You come back to it again and again. You polish it. Sometimes you don't polish because it's perfect as such. It's a strange enterprise, and you as a writer, you know, there are so many ways, as, as many ways as people, and, and inside one human life, so many different ways. In Brasilia, I will probably be doing it differently than in Japan, because there is no Shinkansen there. I'll find something else. Other questions or comments? about this goodness, so just a comment on that extension of that. Formal education probably doesn't give us that kind of human values that we need. Ultimately, it, it initiates the process probably. Then it has to go down to the self. And if the self realizes the need for that, and we can ourselves realize it, only this, this particular thing in practical life can come up. It is not always, I, I personally think that uh, 
the material thing and the spiritual things are antagonistic to each other. The material things gives us confidence, a sense of protection, and yeah, plus points. The problem arises when we want material things through ways which are not proper. If the ways are proper, then they, it would give a different kind of spirit and probably the material and the spiritual world can to some extent come together because we need the material world for life. So uh, thank thank you. you very much. I think you, you pointed very well this dichotomy. But this dichotomy should not be dichotomy. That's what I'm speaking for. I'm trying just to redress at the moment something which is on the falling side to prop it up a little bit. That's like, uh, like uh, emphasizing something towards truth and maybe being a little bit too loud about it. Of course, I'm fully aware of the necessity to have both together. As we have right and left hand, we need both to do certain things. And of course, I think that everybody should be dressed properly and well and clean. And so it's out of question that I would be against material world. It's the world which has been created by spiritual world. So how could I reject it? Thank you, Excellency, for your very nice presentation. Uh, I had a practical question. <laughs> As a, the, the missionary ambassador to, to Japan, and uh, checking out your backgrounds as humanities uh, specialist, I was wondering, uh, in the history of, of my country, Iran, that was uh, almost seven years ago, there was a famous clergyman who uh, decided to get into the parliament. And uh, well, probably he was the first clergyman went into the parliament and involved in the, uh, the marketing uh, processes of, of the country's uh, governments. And he had a famous saying that seems pretty far to reach, but it says that our politics is, is, is like our spirituality. And I was wondering, because the two in the very modern sense seems to be to uh, secular and a spiritual uh, duality, which, which is hard to fit together. And I was wondering if someone practicing these two uh, apparently very uh, paradoxical um, fields of, of, of knowledge and, and practice, how could you balance the two? I was wondering if you could uh, give us some, some, some points on that, especially as, as the ambassador dealing with other diplomats and other people, and also as a person who care for humanities, spirituality, and, and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you, but I, I, I don't see that uh, there is any, any conflict in me regarding this. Of course, sometimes you have some duties to do, but you never need to cross the border or to do something which is indecent, which is inappropriate to say life, it is not necessary. Although people say that diplomats are people who lie for their country. I have never done that, and I've done so far very well in my diplomatic work. I think if you are honest and, and you say the truth, and uh, you know, during the war time, that was a terrible time when I was in London, and I was nearly every night at the BBC speaking about what was going on in former Yugoslavia. I would always say the truth, and. Uh, I was very powerful in front of people who would be saying lies there. Of course, the public might have been confused because if one says one thing, what, what, what is real truth? Sometimes maybe media, it's their duty to be a little bit more analytical and to, to say that all what is said is not truth. And sometimes what's happening in the world today, big problem is that we have replaced the truth and lie, that some kind of total inversion has happened that good is presented as bad and bad is presented as good. And of course, a lot of politically correct lines that are also coming from certain sources, and these politically correct lines replace truth, but truth is much more mightier and powerful than politically correct line. Politically correct line is just a line to get through, not to, to be truthful. So how do I do it? I mean, I was very friendly with Dalai Lama. He, he was an example for me how to merge spiritual and political. And he had these two roles. Sometimes I saw that in certain ways 
the emperor of Japan has also unification of these two roles. Of course, he's not so political anymore, but symbolically, politically, symbolically, and uh, spiritually, he's the first priest of the realm, in my opinion. So there are situations when these two can meet. And those are examples that I would cherish and look forward and towards for, for my own life. very much. I, I feel very humbled by your speech. Um, I, being a Brazilian, um, I'm wondering um, your stay in Brazil, how, how is it, if, if it's possibly expanding your haiku um, consciousness, <laughs> but if you could comment on, on your stay there. And, uh, I'm very happy there is a Brazilian in the audience, so I'm not the only one who traveled from far away. I'm actually living in Australia now. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, if you come to Brazil, <laughs> if you come to Brazil, please uh, get in touch, and then we can speak more about it at length. I mean, wherever I, uh, Latins say, where, "Omnia mea me cum porto," wherever I am, I carry my things with me. So this silver booklet is either in Brazil or in Tokyo or in Croatia. So I would be doing my things. For me, it's very important to be creative and to do things that are common good agenda things, and I will be doing them wherever I am. How will it be formulated and how it will look like in Brazil, I don't know yet, because I'm very new in that country. I was there just a month and two weeks. So it's a beautiful, vast country with a lot of potential and wonderful people. I'm happy that I'm there, that I can learn about Another part of the world, Latin America, was always away from me.